I think on behalf of the Hester family, uh, quite a few thank yous for our award here today. Uh, ben Ankles for your wonderful job. And C. Uh, of course, all our friends at the United States Postal Service, uh, Governor Mickey Barnett and Postmaster General Patrick Donahoe, who could not be with us today. Um, uh, Gladys Harrison and Lane Owens. Um, our art director for the stamp, Ray, Ray Reading, and our artist, uh, Bruce Drusen, as well, who actually did the painting. And of course, our good friends at SAG, uh, Ned and Gabrielle, thank you very much for your, and all our friends at SAG, for your wonderful speeches. Uh, Turner Classic Louis, of course, and the Chinese Theater uh, for this magnificent venue. Uh, I have a soft spot in my heart for Turner because it was Ted Turner that gave me my first job as a director on Treasure Island uh, back in 89 with my dad. So, uh, very, very happy to be here at the start of the Classic Film Festival. And of course, our good friends, Michael Levine and Jeannie Furstenberg, uh, we're most grateful for everything you've done to make all of you to make this a reality today. This magnificent honor, extraordinary honor to my family and my father. Most importantly, I'd like to thank my mother, Lydia, who, uh, first of all, without her, I wouldn't be here or anywhere else for that matter. Um, but she took the photo on which this stamp is based. So thank you, Mom. Well done. If, if my dad was here in person, I know he would begin by telling you the following story. And many of you have heard this a uh, hundred times before, and so I hope you'll indulge me. Uh, dad was shooting Ben Hur, spent several months learning to drive a chariot, which is a little bit harder than learning to drive a horse. And Yakima Knut, the famous stunt coordinator and second unit director, was working with Dad on his chariot driving skills. When the day actually filmed the race grew near, uh, Dad went up to Yak and said, Yak, uh, you know, I'm a little concerned about my ability to actually drive this thing uh, in, in the race. Some of the other fellows, well, most of them are stuntmen and drivers, and they're pretty good at this stuff. I'm not sure I can actually keep up with them. Yak tipped his cowboy hat in the back of his head, squirted a little quid of tobacco juice, and said, you just stay in the dang cherry, Chuck. I guarantee you're going to win the dang race. <laughs> That's a true story. Dad saw himself as a shy kid from the backwoods of Michigan who liked to wear tights and funny noses and wave swords around while speaking in strange accents. He often said he was astonished that people actually paid him to pretend to be other people and that he'd do it for nothing if someone would feed his family. I'm glad the word didn't get out on that, yeah. As it turns out, he was not an Old Testament prophet, a charioteer, a saint, a genius, a cowboy, a Spanish knight, an English king, a president, or an astronaut. He only played with his people. What he was, was a warm, loving husband, father, and grandfather. A passionate artist, a committed labor leader, and an unabashedly patriotic American with a deep and abiding sense of civic duty. He was also a fanatical tennis aficionado. Before becoming an actor, he served in World War II as a radio gunner in the 8th Air Force, flying in brutal weather out of the Aleutian Islands in Alaska. I often told him that if you served in World War II and saved the free world, you get a get out of public service free card for life. But he didn't see it that way. While acting and sometimes writing and also directing in more than 80 films, television shows, and plays, he found time to serve on the board of the Screen Actors Guild with Ronald Reagan and eventually served as SAG president for six years. He also served on the board of the National Council of the Arts, stood up for civil rights, and led the arts contingent with Dr. Martin Luther King in the March on Washington. He helped to found the American Film Institute, serving as chairman of AFI's Board of Trustees for 11 years and as president for nine years. He volunteered for the USO and served two combat tours on the front lines in Vietnam with his fellow artists, among numerous other conflicts. He also toured extensively and made films for the United States State Department, among others. He was asked and declined to run for political office by both parties and served as president of the National Rifle Association for three terms. 
He won numerous awards and accolades, among them the Academy Awards, including the Jean Herschel Humanitarian Award, two Golden Globes, the Screen Actors Guild's Lifetime Achievement Award, and was the first recipient of AFI's Charlton Heston Award. He was awarded the Kennedy Center Honors by President Clinton and the Medal of Freedom by President Bush, our nation's highest civilian honor. And yet he never felt that he had done enough for his country, his fellow artists, or his family. Dad, I reckon he stayed in the chariot. When you think about it, stamps are a really cool thing. Not only a promise that for 49 cents, your government will deliver a letter anywhere in the world, not just an impersonal electronic message, but if you still write actual letters, and I hope you do, a deeply personal expression of who you are as an individual, a window into your character, which is a pretty darn good deal for 49 cents. But a nation's stamps as a whole are also an expression of a nation's culture in microcosm, in something, well, about the size of a postage stamp. If you took a cross-section of our country's stamps from the very first Ben Franklin five cent issued in 1847 to the Charlton Heston Legends of Hollywood stamp in 2014, you would have a pretty fair notion of our nation, the character of its leaders, artists, statesmen, poets, and heroes. From George Washington to Gary Cooper, from Abraham Lincoln to Dr. Martin Luther King, from Charles Lindbergh to Jimmy Stewart. You would have a pretty good idea of who we are as a country, what we stand for, what ideals we hold highest, and the kind of men and women we admire. I think, I know, my father would be deeply honored even to be mentioned in that august company, let alone to have his image so beautifully rendered forever on the United States Postal Service Forever Stamp. Thank you, and stay in the chariot. If, uh, thank you, Frazier. If Tom Boga hadn't coined the term the greatest generation before, it seems like we need to come up with it to define them like Charles Nest. I also I want to echo one thing before we go that Frazier said, because it cost $3.79 to buy a bottle of water. And I don't know who thinks it's funny or cool to make fun of the post office, but for less than 50 cents, you can write something down in Cleveland and send it to your uncle in Phoenix, and a day or two later, he gets it at his house and opens it? Come on! As, as some of you at the festival know, I have a daughter. She just turned one. People asked what to get her for her birthday. She's one, so nothing. Um, <laughs> but what my wife told them, and it's the greatest idea ever, and everybody else should do it. We told everybody involved in our family in her life, we said, write her a letter. And when she's two, write her another letter. And hopefully when she's 13 or 14 or 15, I don't know that she will be able to read until she's 17 or 18. <laughs> but at some point, uh, she'll read those letters. And uh, I don't know, I can't think of a better gift. And, and, and the post office makes that possible. Before we conclude, I want to let everyone know that that beautiful Charlton Nest and Forever Stamps is available to buy today in the courtyard along with, of course, other post office products. It'll also be an autograph session. I know many of us up on stage have already signed uh, the program, so you'll be able to get that as well. Also, not too late to stop by Will Call, pick up your ticket to see the Touch of Evil, which I couldn't recommend more. The movie will be shown in this theater at noon. Tickets are $20 each. It's been an honor uh, for TCM and for me to participate in this ceremony today. I'm touched by it. I was touched by it a number of times. Uh, thanks for letting me serve as your master of ceremonies. And on behalf of the Postal Service, on behalf of Turner Classic Movies, thanks for coming, everybody. Thank you. Oh, and one, one last moderately rude thing. 
It's only a matter of time before I say something rude. Um, uh, we do need to get people into the theater to uh, show the movie at 12 o'clock, so, so uh, make your exits uh, you know, reasonable for that. Thank you very much.